but then usually tragedy follows him and he's whipped back to a point of near insanity. So that's his story arc. But we want to put you in the seat of Mad Max and then we want to let you in this open world uh, post-apocalyptic environment. We want to let you be the author of your own unique Mad Max story. Very cool. So we're checking out some gameplay here. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> it's got this open world that Avalanche is so well known for crafting. And, uh, you know, you guys have always been so good at, at, at creating an environment that it, it, it's almost a character onto itself. Tell me a little bit about the wasteland here that we're going to be seeing in the game. Yeah, so um, it's, that's definitely right. Uh, we want players... Of He's sort? actually filling up this canteen with water. Oh, okay, got there it. are a few of those water sources uh, dotted around the wasteland. Um, they're hard to find, but there are some allies and, and uh, civilians in the world who will help you find some of these resources that are in great shortage. I hope he's pouring that through a Brita filter. That's all I've got to say. He's, he's used to eating some pretty disgusting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. We're hopping into a, a vehicle, and this is obviously a signature uh, element of this game. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys approach the car combat aspect. Yeah, so that's definitely, I think, one of the most exciting parts of this game. Uh, we start off with Max losing his iconic interceptor um, in a battle with Scrotus' war boys. Um, and Max is really stripped bare of everything. And then the journey for you as the player is to fashion a vehicle that will allow Max to escape to the Plains of Silence and, and hopefully find some inner peace. He gets some companions like Chum Bucket, who you see in the back here. He's a wasteland black finger, uh, a fanatical mechanic um, who almost treats uh, vehicles and engines and just that whole mechanic uh, way of life as a religion mm. um, total fanatic so he gets some uh, friends to help him but he, he gradually over time builds up uh, his very own uh, you as a player will build up your very own wasteland war machine and it will be an expression of the choices that you make in the world what directions you want to go in and also the playing style that you choose so uh, your magnum opus will be completely different to mine and in fact We'll be able to compare them in some online um, situations. Uh, you might choose something that is really heavyweight, has a massive ramming grill, um, but you're going to need, you know, tires with high traction, a heavy motor uh, to power that kind of um, vehicle. I might choose your weakness is probably going to be that you can't survive in rocky ground. You're going to get stuck there. You're going to be a beach whale. Um, <laughs> much more vulnerable, whereas I might choose something that allows me to better suspension, allows me to go over rugged, uh, rocky terrain and so on, maybe explore more of the world that you can't get to. So your magnum opus will really be an expression of the choices you've made and your, your player style. Understood. So here we're seeing some combat, actually. And I know in the world of Mad Max, I mean, supplies are very, very limited. Yeah. Uh, bullets uh, come at a premium. So, so what are some of the strategies that players are going to be able to use in car combat to take out the enemies? Yeah, so you see this uh, unfortunate, uh, I think it was a Scrotus Warboy being tugged by the harpoon. <laughs> and in this, um, in this uh, demo experience here, you'll see a, a variety of weapons being used in this high-octane, high-paced, very physical uh, vehicular combat. Um, there's the harpoon. And that can pull off armor, it can pull drivers out of the wind, windshield, um, it can uh, pull wheels off. It can also be used to shoot incendiary devices, these thunder sticks that you'll see from the Mad Max universe, mm. uh, almost like a rocket launcher. Uh, you will see Max using his iconic shotgun. Um, of course, you can, it wouldn't, would be no Mad Max game without exactly, that, right? Yeah. And, and if you're... If you're uh, we, did, we did start from the ground up, and we were really trying to... Um, capture as many of the elements that we love from um, the previous Mad Max films, for example, and, and what feels right for this world. So you'll see, for example, Borders, uh, also a very um, very like, iconic and, and nearly trademark aspect of the Mad Max universe. Guys hopping from one vehicle to yours right. and attacking uh, with no real regard for their own lives. <laughs> uh, there's one now. We'll see if Max succeeds in getting him off there before. Yeah, now what are your options if this happens to you, if the guy jumps on your Well, you like can, that? Um, there's one. There's one, that's, yeah. that's straight to the point. Uh, you can use the shotgun, and you can try and scrape him off with a, a, a cliff wall or something, depending on the terrain that you're in. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of options. In fact, Chum Bucket was hiding in the back when that guy was on, but now when he sees he's safe, he'll come back out and he'll help you. And if you stop the car, 
and the, the magnum opus is damaged, you'll climb onto the roof and start putting out the fire in your engine. And ah, nice. Tinkering. And I need one of those guys for my Mazda 3. Exactly. Um, Everyone so should have one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell me a little bit more. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of modifications that you can do. It sounds like, I mean, gas is scarce. You know, you're, you're fighting for your life every minute of this. How do you guys break up this, like, intense car combat? Yeah. Obviously, so, uh, you know, you do get out of the car sometimes. I'm curious, you know, are there, are there, are there, are there ever, uh, do you fight guys mono e mono like, like boss battles or tough battles that's just max on, on, a, on a tough enemy? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's just the main storyline. There's a good balance between different types of scenarios, the, the, the characters that you're meeting, um, in a gang of other war boys, then they'll all catch fire and... Um, Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so equally brutal and high paced. Uh, but exploring the world is definitely something that we want uh, to use as a way to get a breather. Um, we like to, because of the perimeter defenses that are placed around certain camps, we like to encourage you to take out your binoculars and scout, find a convoy, find one that you think, well, I'm probably going to be able to take this one up, take this one down, or, well, this one looks really heavily guarded. I'm going to have to go back upgrade my magnum opus, get some more armor, some more armor, maybe more ammo um, before taking on this one. There's a, a feature that I really like, which is um, you, if, you, if you pull the driver out of a scrotus vehicle and don't destroy the vehicle, uh, you can jump into that car, approach a camp, and the camp won't get alerted because oh, interesting. They, they don't know it's Vehicular max. stealth, that's, I, I might be a first. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Yep. So, um, in fact, they'll open the doors for you and welcome you with open arms. Oh, my. Yeah. And then you, and you, you unload that double barrel right in their face. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm charmed. This is uh, very, very cool. Um, so, you know, 